governance and humanity. Good governance, safety, a chance to grow economically and professionally. Those are important things. And that's from Dina Marie Perino. That was American political commentator and author. And she was also the 26th White House press secretary under President George W. Bush. In the recent Council of State meeting with President Tunubu, the discussion centered on the critical importance of being receptive to feedback from the masses. In today's rapidly evolving world, the effectiveness of governance is directly tied to a leader's ability to listen and respond to the needs and aspirations of the people. Engaging with the citizenry is not merely a democratic obligation. It is a strategic imperative for ensuring that policies resonate at the grassroots level. By valuing the input of the masses, leaders can craft solutions that are both practical and sustainable, driving real progress and fostering trust in government institutions. Similarly, the recent peace talks between the Democratic Republic of Congo and Congo and Rwanda highlights the urgent need for African leaders to focus on sustainable governance and humanity development beyond the confines of conflict and vested interests. For too long, the continent has been plagued by conflicts rooted in political ambitions and territorial disputes. Yet, true leadership is demonstrated when leaders prioritize the welfare and the development of their people above all else. By championing peace and creating environments conducive to education, healthcare, and economic opportunities, African leaders have the power to break the cycle of violence and poverty that have hindered the continent's progress. Let us hold our leaders accountable to place effective governance at the forefront where the voices of the masses are not just heard but acted upon and where the focus shifts from the conflicts to building a brighter, more prosperous future for all Africans. The time for transformative change is now and we must inculcate the following. Engage actively in civic discussion to ensure your voice contributes to shaping governance. Advocate for peace and sustainable development in your community and beyond. Demand transparency and accountability from leaders to foster trust and meaningful change. And that's it, my fellow advocates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, recently, uh, on Monday, during the, the International Youth Day, okay. on Monday it was the uh, 12th oh, August, August, yeah, that was okay. International Youth Day. There was this peace talks between, that was, I'm going to say this before we go into the Council of State right. meeting now, okay. the peace talk conversation between the President of Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo, and the President of Rwanda, okay. or Kagami. And they were trying to discuss around ceasefire within that region. You know, they are always plagued with instability yeah, and um, threats of regime change by way of military coup or rebel hijacking government. And the citizens are largely affected. Precisely. The question is, there are too many vested re uh, interests in that region, mm -hmm. as seen at, in, across most parts of Africa. Now, the question is, why can or how can governance be more sustainable in Africa mm -hmm. so that we can thrive as well as or like other continents of the world? Mm -hmm. Poverty is always associated to Africa. Economic mm -hmm. instability, Africa, conflicts are all those. Even though, I'm not saying this is not happening in other countries, mm -hmm. other continents. But why Africa? Can mm -hmm. we just group beyond this narrative? Precisely. Yeah, Reverend Kushain. Uh, to me, I happen to be uh, what a, a professor was uh, doing a swarming ceremony in a Koyi there. So I happen to be there with uh, one of my ministers in the church. So many dignitaries from, uh, they are Nigerian, but they travel from other countries to come and join me. So they were talking and uh, appreciating Rwanda. Or Kagami. Kag uh, yes, for Kagami in Kigami. So they appreciating him, talking this and that. And now they were so long, uh, they were so surprised the way the man had transformed the country. Mm. So I just went to meet them, said, please, so, don't say I'm just averting and, and averting your this and that, but I have a contribution to what you are saying. So they are academic people, they are government, uh, top government people. So I told them that, do you know the what brought about that in Rwanda? I told them, when, after the genocide war. 1994 genocide. Yes. 
after that, Paul Kagami invited Rick Warren from America, the one that, you know, that um, uh, officiated um, part of the officiating team of during Obama, Obama swearing in. So, invited uh, Warren, Rick Warren, to come and lead them through uh, purpose-driven life. There is a book he wrote. I mean, uh, requiring. requiring, yes, purpose driven life. We study it for 40 days. So he said they should come and lead, the, the, she come and lead them through that. And Pop Gami now, other, everyone, maybe you are in private business, you are in a, a government business. After closing from your work, please go to stadium directly or any viewing center. So they do the, uh, can I call it a revival <laughs> together? Reorientation. Yes. After that time, that country never be the, will be the same again. Till today, it's, today, Rwanda is regarded as the best nation mm. in, uh, in Africa. Mm. Today. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, uh, that uh, is as much as I agree with the strategy. To conclude, to conclude okay. on that, anybody who separate, if a tree separated himself, itself even from the from from the soil, this tree will die, have If a fish get out of water, it will die. So if human being separate separate himself is uh, from uh, uh, God, that person will die. And that is one of those things that is meditating. I'm not saying oh that is one of those things that are meditating against Africa. Okay, so if from your own view, Reverend yes. Abiola, uh, you're, saying, you're coming from the angle that um, these uh, Africans should try as much as possible to take their feet seriously. Perhaps yes. that will help in orientating and uh, maybe giving them light in strategy for cross or intercontinental development. That's yes. your angle. Yes. Okay, uh, um, uh, as much as that's a very good one, it's, it's a very valid point. Although some persons might dig back to the fact that, okay, fine, the president of Rwanda has done his part, but the aspect of <laughs> dictatorship and all this, but that's, that's more like another day. My, my, mm -hmm. Our major focus is, um, can we just go beyond the two weeks of what African is known for, conflict, yeah. instability, for the benefit of the masses? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yes, so I think that um, there's need for, you know, in the context of Africa, the peace talks, um, I think that there's need for African continent uh, as a continent, right? Government to prioritize human development, right? Over territorial conflict. And that way would be able to ensure sustainable development. How do you ensure sustainable development? You invest in education, you invest in healthcare, you invest in the economy, you know, state of the country. And um, when we focus on that, right? Because you're investing in all, in your citizens, uh, you invest in their education, in healthcare, you're investing in the masses, right? And that way you ensure sustainable development. And I think that we'll be able to break the old, you know, of poverty, just like you said, that that's held the country back. And um, so, yeah. Okay, so, Hussein, I was going to ask you a thought on this. You know, this last protest that concluded, those are the aims of affairs in government, and especially those close to the presidency, are quick to dismiss the protest as. A, an opportunity for regime change and that they are uh, granted we agree that some political elements opposing political elements we want to take advantage of any masses uproar to air their grievances or do things to negate what the government of the day is doing for political gain granted i know about that we know about that but then beyond the political rhetorics of who oh, you are opposing me because you are not in my party how about the real thing going on? Like in the north, you see them crying about hunger. Like there was a particular community that was being, that was, uh, there was this documentary they showed on TV mm -hmm. recently last week in the protest where we saw a particular community that in the north, they were being tormented by hunger. Should I use that word? They cannot go to the farm easily to go and farm because of insecurity problem. Mm -hmm. And then what they were doing is practically yeah. eating leaves. Security. Yeah, they, were, they showed, I'm sure you watched it. You watched it on news, yeah. And then, People are crying hungry, we big power, we big power, right? We are hungry. Mm -hmm. And people are talking about we cannot send our children to school. Like mm -hmm. the uh, father will refer yeah. to that had a son mm -hmm. that is so good with programming, but he couldn't afford data, just common data to buy for his son so that mm -hmm. the son can learn more. So these things now, how can we encourage government to use 
feedback from the masses as a way, as a strategy for effective governance and delivering good governance. Uh, Jose, please. Before I go to there, so you once uh, you mentioned the aspect of uh, for Kagame uh, and having a conversation with Congo and what I do. So I I was opportune to train my team to attend Youth Connect Africa, hosted by Paul Kagame in Rwanda, Kigali. And then if you look at what he is passionate about, he's passionate about the people and what would benefit the people. And he, he ensured that things that would distract the people, like the religious sentiment, are put aside. Because he showed that over 6,000 churches and mosques in Rwanda to ensure that all those kind of religious belief sentiments are put aside. And part of what he said was to say, number one, we are exporting our talents. We should develop our talent in-house, manage our data, and help us develop our data. And if you recall, if you take BBD, uh, Kigali or Rwanda precisely is a land grid area, they don't have a river. And one of the strategic ways to bring in things into the country, we have Tanzania that is close to them, they use Tanzania ports, and they also use Congo ports, sea ports, as a means to bring in uh, uh, you know, goods and services that they cannot produce into their, into their country. And of course, the overall issue that is affecting Congo and the public of Congo will definitely affect the, the uh, sea yeah, nice. port activities that this country needs. So what, what am I bringing this reference? He is trying to create a speed, a speed so that it's things that they need to benefit in an relationship with those countries, their people will be able to benefit from it. That is someone having people okay, ask. Yeah. Now, the contrary, is what we have in Nigeria, where we have people who only think for power, not the people. And the, the crazy thing about this is the political system that gets them into the office. If we don't change that, we are going to, we are into a big mess, right? One, Nigerian polit politicians believe that they spend money to get to the office. Now, what they're doing is pure business. I need numbers. I pay you to get those numbers. If I were elected, so people will argue out, excuse me, so people will argue out that our election will not count. But it does count, because if it doesn't count, you won't see them pay for people to go out and vote. That means it actually counts. So once they pay, they've spent billions of naira to get to the office. Now, don't forget the fact that this billion they spend, there are somebody back holding them. And those are people that is categorized as capable. Now, these people will come for their money at their own time, at their own rate, at their own convenience. So when they get to the office, they are done doing business with the people. They are focusing on how to pay those money. That, this is a reality that people need to check. Now, if you look at the protest, here yes, there is hunger. You see, I support the protest because I need people need to, you know, press out and see their um, uh, to show their preferences and probably the government will listen. But unfortunately, we are in, in such a mess that I can see news flying around that the government is even saying they are after the people who organize the protests. And not a single demand from the protests is being addressed. We still have another campaign promises that we will be, be having for over one year. And it is evidence that people are hungry. This is the very first time you see a protest where people do not mind the Fujian settings, people do not mind the tribal settings, because it's a common factor that is affecting both the poor and the rich, and the middle class, precisely. You know, we have some extremely rich people who do not, uh, who do not see it as, as a means. You know, they, they, they don't see that as an issue because they really have a means. One of the ministers, I, don't, I, don't, uh, I was watching the Chinese TV, interview, one of the ministers was saying people protest, the madness court protest. That is on, on court for. <laughs> people are actually angry. People are actually hungry. People are actually feeling it. And you are calling it a madness. Yeah, there is no protest. You can see it in the United Kingdom, the poor protests that break out. There is no protest that is going to be entirely peaceful. You can see it in other developed nations. And the only thing is for us to find a way as much as possible to punish the people who go against 
what is expected because people will definitely take advantage of this. A lot of uh, bureaucracy will come, a lot of uh, probably, uh, uh, a lot of stories will come of so so person sponsor, this one sponsor, this one sponsor. But the reality is, we are all feeling it. Price of goods are expensive. Transport is expensive. The fuel is not there. A lot of questions are there to be answered, and we don't have a single response from the from from, from the government. So bad, you know. I, I don't know how we're going to get back, but I think thank you very much. Use our and, power. Um, what? We can actually agree now that uh, as much as it's important for us to have um, whatever things we want to achieve good governance, it's mm -hmm. important and imperative that the government should, as much listen. as possible, listen to the cry of the masses yeah, and that's why beyond I mean. political rhetoric mm -hmm. so that they could deliver good governance Precisely. effectively and sustainable governance. And sustainable. Yeah. So, um, up next is Hussein from Abuja. Stay with us.